Welcome back to the Ground Control Station, guys. And today, we have ourselves a Cobra 148 GTL, man. Okay. And we just got done breaking down the screws. So what we're going to do is take the cover off. Put that to the side. Check it out. Now, the story behind this radio is I know two guys. They're friends, and I'm friends with them too, 498 and 203. Now, this radio here belongs to Randy, 203. It was given to him by 498 a while back. So there's only been two owners to this 148, okay? And that'd be 498, Mr. J., and it was given to 203, Mr. Randy. So, from what I was told, is that this radio is completely clipped and, you know, some 1990s uh, modifications done to it, man. As you can tell, this is made in the Philippines. So, we got ourselves a decent, decent radio. 1989. All right, so this thing's got some age to it. And I can tell there's been some th mods done to it as well. Somebody drilled a hole here, and somebody also drilled a hole there. Okay, those aren't factory. Uh, you can also see some, I guess, a portion of the swing kit modification here. This jumper here is bare. I don't like that at all, but it's in a pretty good, decent condition. Okay, so, uh, you know, basically it's two owners. I know both of them. And um, at one time, they really enjoyed this radio. So what we're going to do here at the Black Ops Technology Bench is we're going to completely go through this 148. Okay, get it back, stock, cleaned up. And then we'll put our advanced tune to it. All right. Um, more than likely, we'll change out the LED to match the indicator on the channel selector. Um, we're going to put a new face plate on it. And we're going to clean these covers up. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking about going with a nice red Cobra vinyl decal on top as well. We'll, come, we'll cross that bridge when we get there, though. Okay. So basically, I got two buds who own this radio. And one was nice enough to give the radio to his friend. So what I'm seeing here is a lot of re reflow. Let me adjust my camera real quick. All right, I'll bring you in just a little bit more. What I'm seeing here is a lot of reflow work, okay? And you have to be really careful when you reflow pins that are really close to one another, okay? Because they can arc and start reacting with one another. I see some, see some more reflow work here. Okay, now if you look here, right in this area, let me grab my handy dandy poker. If you look in this area here, that's basically factory solder. So it's probably, you know, even back in 89, they had robot arms, man. They were soldering shit up, dude. Um, and you can tell the huge difference between really good solder work and chicken poop. That's what Mr. BBI, Mr. Luke Miller calls it. So I'm going to call it the same thing. And if you ever been in a chicken coop and look down, <laughs> it does, man. It reminds you of chicken, chicken poop. <laughs> oh, man. But yeah, we're going to get this thing squared away. Scoot this back real quick. Now, I've already broken the radio down, and I have been inside it, but I have not had it on my bench. Um, as in, on the test equipment. Okay, so earlier, I took off the speaker cables. And, um, okay. 
TR24 removed. I'm pretty sure that is removed. If it's written on here, more than likely it's the truth. Um, that's a no-no, guys. Okay? If you enjoy your 148, and to a degree, it's a gem. Okay? It's a gem of a radio. To a degree. Um, TR24 should not be removed. Okay? This is one of your limiters. All right? And once you start diving into clipping, you know, you can't get your harmonics right. And so inevitably, this is probably going to be a splatter box. <laughs> All right, I see somebody wrote down uh, the variable resistor locations and what it does. Okay, cool. All right, let's chalk that to the side. And see what we have here. Oh boy. You know what? Let's sit that down straight. Let's pick you guys up. And I'm not going to be too picky or nitpick at this thing too, too much. But I can tell you this right now. That's some ugly solder work here, man. Okay. Nasty, nasty solder work. And to tell you the truth, here was a ground here too. I'm not even sure why that glob is there. That's fucking nuts. They, they must have moved the ground. Okay. Well, it's still got the original transistors in the back. I didn't get any of that compound on my finger. That shit is so dry. Yeah, look, I just get a little bit of, yeah, a little bit of dust. It's all dusty. So that's not good, man. Okay, that's not he helping to transfer heat from the transistor to the chassis. All right. Now, a lot of people say, oh, thermal compound is only for when you're trying to mount a transistor to a non-flat surface. The thermal compound helps transfer the heat to where the f surface isn't flat. No, that's not true, man. You know, what are pills bolted to? A flat heat sink, and it still calls for thermal compound. <laughs> Same thing here for RF transistors. Look, they're on a flat chassis wall, okay? It still calls for thermal compound. Thermal compound, whether the surface is flat or not, still helps with heat transfer from component to chassis okay now i say this in the in the manner that i do because i had a guy come up on my channel and tell me that i put too much thermal compound on my voltage regulator and my rf transistors and this is like oh come on dude like get over it you know if you want to do this then go you know go start up your own side business and your own youtube channel all right don't come over here preaching to the choir. So inevitably, when I pull off the finals and I pull off the voltage regulator, okay, or any of the IC chips is mounted to the chassis, I put the thermal compound behind it. I come back and I press the, uh, the component back to chassis and I bolt it back. And yes, the thermal compound squeezes out and pushes outward with pressure, all right? Don't be afraid to use thermal compound. Don't be afraid to check your thermal compound on your radio because it's needed, flat surface or not. Thank you for that. <laughs> I had to get that off my chest. Um, but yeah, man, it's not too terrible of a radio. We're going to look here, man, at your trap cools, at your 54 megahertz trap cools. Now, they were pretty, uh, pretty easy with spreading them. 
They're not completely so far out of whack, untuned coil, whatever the case may be. But we'll get your uh, we'll get your trap coils back right, Randy. Okay, your 54 megahertz trap coils, which are those copper coils right there. Okay, they they produce ghost watts, inevitably spurious harmonics. Okay, it's to make your uh, or their peak meter happy. Okay, and we all know that's BS. Okay. Yeah, so uh, it's actually in really, really good shape. All right, well, without further ado, man, we're going to start our work, okay? Um, like I say, this is going to be a whole uh, bring it back to life type deal, all right? We're going to try to spiffy this thing up as much as possible. A lot of people love these radios. Okay. Some people pay three and four hundred dollars for these radios. Technician to see beer. It's not worth it. It's not worth three and four hundred dollars. Okay. If you're going to pay the same price for one of these as you would a Striker 955. I'd say two things. Either you really, really like this radio, <laughs> or you're a fool. Okay? These are not worth three and four hundred dollars, my friends. Whether it's a Malaysian made, Chicago Dynascan made, Philippines made, they're not worth that much money. This is a common AM SSB radio, all right? Now, I'm not going to fault anybody who pays an outrageous price for this. I'm not. I'm not going to fault you. Whatever you like, whatever you want, you know, and uh, you can't find a better, a better way to obtain one than, you know, it is what it is. Teach their own is basically what I'm saying. OK, to each their own. Um, But if you can get one at a good deal and it's in really good shape. then it uh, shouldn't be too uh, too bad of an issue to own one. I'd like to own one, but every time I see one, they're two, three, and I've actually seen them $400 plus, okay? I can't do that. Will not do that, all right? I'm actually in the midst of still restoring my 1,000, okay? from the uh, wood grain. If you check this out here. All right, we got some uh, wood, some wood bondo or whatever you want to call it. And we're going to eventually sand it all up and then paint it and restore everything. But, you know, I got this for like 75 bucks. And it works fully. Uh, it's kind of ugly and dented up and scratchy a little bit, you know, but yeah. We'll restore it, man. Have some fun. But, you know, I just uh, I refuse to pay outrageous prices for uh, a 2000 or 1000 or, or 148, you know. And actually, I like the 148, but I like the 140 GTL better. OK. Um, but, yeah, they're both, you know, kind of like the same design. Uh, basically, a damn near you know, uh, completely similar design, but I like the 140 GTL a little bit better. If you know, if you know these GTL model radios, you know, it's, uh, it's just a little bit different looking on the outside. I also have another radio in works and we're actually going to restore it. I'm going to dive into the GTLs, man, because they're so collectible. But isn't that cute, man? Coochie, 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 coochie. Just a little baby GTL. Look at that. I've never seen a Cobra 19 GTL, man. So I had picked it up, man. And then one of these days, we're going to restore this little guy. Okay. And then I'm going to find me a uh, a Cobra GTL fanatic, man. A collector. And I'm going to bless him with this little tiny CB radio for collection, man. Okay. She's a little funky, a little dirty, but you know. Nothing a little elbow grease can't help. Yeah, small stuff like that, man, is, uh, I don't know. It's kind of eye-catching to me. Um, 
But other than that, man, yeah, and chewing the fat with you guys, I got to get busy, okay? Going to put talk back in it. We're going to install the on-off switch for the talk back. We're going to match up the channel indicator and the, and the S meter. I see we got a slight little crack. Yeah, right there in the S meter. If I can find a good replacement that I'll have in it, wait for eBay to ship me one, then we're going to replace that. It might just be a scratch. I might be able to buff that out. Yeah, right there. All right. But we're going to do this stuff for Mr. Randy and Mr. J. And uh, while I'm at it, waving a hand at you two guys, man. My uh, radio brothers, man. That's right. <laughs> Cobra 148 GTL. All right, guys. Y'all probably know what I'm about to say. Let's get down to business. All right, guys, and we got her hooked up to the test equipment. I actually just got off the phone with the uh, original owner texting him. And um, because all these uh, holes that are, you know, not factory drilled. Uh, but it was noise toys in it, uh, echo board and, and stuff like that. So that's where the holes come from. All right, so um, we got her hooked up to the test equipment, 25 watts forward, okay? We're going to check this out. All right, you got about a full watt dead key, all right? But this is what I want to show you guys. We're going to throw this slug in reverse. So now the slug is in reverse. So it's 25 watts in reverse. So we're gonna be looking at reflected power, okay? Four watt dead key. All right. You got about three and a half watts of reflect. I'm on key, okay? We're gonna put that forward again. We're gonna come over here, all right? 27205. Look at the SWR on my dummy load. 21.3. There's 4.1 watt dead key there. But you have three and a half watts of refl uh, reflected power. So I'm on key. So inevitably, you don't even have a full watt of dead key that would be reaching out to the antenna and going out into the into the air, into the sky. Okay, do the math, man, you know, four watt dead key, but you got three and a half watts coming back. That's not even a full watt. This radio really, truly isn't even keying a full watt because you're losing the power somewhere. And it's due to um, what has been previously done to this radio. All right. So you got to be really careful with that, man. You know, I do have my work cut out for me here on channel 20. 27205. The BK Precision is bouncing back and forth. Let's see if I can get a good angle. There we go. 27.20659. So it's bouncing back and forth that one, you know, one digit. Um, you know, it's been powered up for about five minutes. She'll eventually stabilize. Um... But yeah, we got to be careful with that, all right? So inevitably, when I'm always talking about high reflect and having the reflect option on a uh, power or uh, SWR meter, okay? Me, I think it's dire. I thinking, I'm, I'm thinking that having a reflect option on a meter is dire. It's a must, okay? Let's just put it that way, all right? Because this is going to tell you Look at that. That's almost, almost <laughs> all of your power is being reflected right now. Okay, that was three and a half watts of reflected power. 
That's power lost. Power coming back down to the radio. And there's your four watt dead key. 4.1 watt dead key. Reflect power is three and a half. SWRs are whacked out on a dummy load, dude. Okay? So, I'm going to sit you down right there. All right. Actually, give me one second. My game at 12 o'clock. Randy has a uh, very sought after Astatic 575M6. It's got tone control and gain control. Okay, I have the gain right there. All right. Tone is in the middle. Okay, this is uh, more so on the high side, and this adds a little bit of bass to it. All right. So we're just gonna leave it in the middle. Randy wants his radio tuned with this. This mic is wired up specifically for the 148. Okay. And we'll get this all cleaned up for you too on the outside. Now. Two division carrier. Oh. Audio check one two three four five. Audio check one two three four five. Audio. Audio check one two three four five. Look at that crazy reflect. Audio check one two three four five. Audio check one two three four five. Audio check one two three four five. All right, that's with the mic gain at uh twelve o'clock. We're going to open it all the way up. See if that... Audio check. One, two, three, four, five. Audio check. All right, you got a pinch carrier. Audio check. Some flat topping. Audio check. One, two, three, four, five. Audio. All right, we're going to sit you down here. Okay? We're going to keep the mic gain wide open. All right? One kilohertz tone coming up. See what I'm saying? You can get away with a lot of BS by showing vocals and using, uh, I mean, showing the harmonics on the O scope, showing the wave on the O scope, but using your vocals, okay? You can hide a lot of clipping and flat topping by talking into the mic and then showing customers the waveform, okay? You can hide a lot of Distortion, flat top, and, and pinch carry. You can hide it. So another reason why one kilohertz tone is definitely a must. Okay, there's no hiding none of that stuff with the 1K tone. All right? So what we're going to do now is we're going to uh, inject the one kilohertz tone through the 575 microphone. And then we're going to back down the mic gain on the radio to see if we can clean it up just a little bit by using that uh, variable. Me personally, I don't think it's gonna clean up much because in the previous section, like I say, uh, the modulation limiter is completely out of this radio. Trap cools are spread, the works, okay? Yeah, so uh, let's do that. One kilohertz tone coming up. All right, it's about one o'clock. 12 o'clock. Eight o'clock. Seven o'clock. That's about seven o'clock, guys. Can you believe that?
7 o'clock on the mic game. To even get something that's close to the correct waveform that would be in compliant with amplitude modulation. Okay, AM mode. All right, remember, guys, it takes two sidebands to make an AM signal. Okay, and you have to have this 148 mic gain almost all the way down to get something decent that's not splattering okay and even if you do that plus you're you're amplifying your vocals already before it's even coming into the radio's modulation chain with the power mic okay so it'd be hard to really keep this radio from splattering and sounding clean over the air yeah, you might be loud and proud you know um, and all that, but you're going to be loud and proud on the channel you're transmitting on and plus four up and four down. That's not cool, you know? So, <laughs> without further ado and further ratchet, John, let's get down to business. We get your, uh, modulation, one of them. Back in line, TR-24, okay, right here, which is basically a uh, transistorized resistor, okay? All right, man. Well, we're conti continuing the process. <laughs> Let's get down to business. And we're back. All right, Randy, got your matching LED and your meter. So we got red on red, okay? Um, we also added two ferrite cores to your speaker cables. This will help keep down with uh, susceptible squeal and feedback and stuff like that uh, when you're using your talkback. All right, move that out the way. We have, uh, where's my handy dandy poker? Uh-oh. Okay, we found it. We have your switch here for uh, your talkback. Okay, get my finger out, hand out the way so this camera will focus. Here's your switch for talkback. All right, got a fair right going to your in and um, and a resistor coming to your out. Okay, so we got some fair right here on this piece. If you see this knot right here in the heat shrink, that's your fair right. Okay, uh, we also pulled back your finals and everything here. Okay, and added some thermal compound we also did it to your voltage regulator and then down the line okay all right so <laughs> without any ratchet on at all we're gonna keep on keeping on let's get down to business and we're back man Two tone for sideband coming up. All right, we got almost 18 watts peak, and that reflect is way, way down, okay? Now, time for the AM side. All right, I had to clip back in because I forgot to bring up the reason for the high SWR and the reflect, Randy. Um, grab my handy dandy poker. But we reflowed um your uh, so239 connection here's your internal feed line so 
It comes in and out of the radio to your coax and then out to the antenna. Well, on the bottom here, on, on the other side, on the uh, solder side of the radio, it was like a couple threads only soldered into that uh, circuit there. So we reflowed the solder side here and we reflowed uh, uh, this connection here as well. So um, that was the culprit for the high SWRs and not freaking out of this world reflect power that you had. Okay. Now, sorry for all the finger snaps, but uh, <laughs> let's keep on keeping on. Let's get down to business. All right, we're back. This is the AM side. Two division carrier. Okay. My game is set at 12 o'clock. One kilohertz tone coming up. Right. Clean and mean. Have a uh, peak there of 8.4 watts. Barely any reflect. The SWR on the dummy load is 1.24. All right. We'll roll through it one more time. One kilohertz tone coming up. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> this thing is stroking. Twenty-seven two zero five channel twenty. Two and a half watt dead key. Zero reflect. Audio check one two three four five. Audio check one two three four five. Audio check one two three four five. All right, come up here, take that off. Audio check one two three four five. Let me center my trigger so it's not as slow. One, two, three, four, five. Let's go ahead and get that two division carrier back. Give me one second. There we go, two division carrier. Audio check one, two, three, four, five. Audio check one, two, three, four, five. Audio check one, two, three, four, five. Ground control, ground control. One, two, three, four, five. Black Ops technology, audio break, break, break. 
One kilohertz tone coming up. All right, there you go, my friend. Next segment, we're going to see the uh, custom faceplate. No doubt about it. We'll be back. And there we have it, man. The final product. I think it came out pretty darn good there, Randy. Now she's got some surface imperfections and stuff like that that I really can't do nothing with. But we added the vinyl decal, we cleaned her up, we added the face plate. We got the harmonic squared away, got you a two and a half watt dead key, uh, matching red LED in the meter. I think it I think it looks pretty damn good, man. Pretty cool. Now, since you're already running a power mic, and this power mic is set up for this radio, you don't want your mic gain any higher than that. Okay? No higher than one o'clock. Because like I say, you're already amplifying your vocals, okay? Before it even hits the radio. So we went through it on the oscilloscope and this is best here. Once you get up here past uh, two o'clock and everything, uh, the power mic really makes your waveform, your harmonics really nasty. Okay. So we're going to leave it right there. All right. Now, the second day I was tuning this radio. Your 575M had a short in it, okay, right here in the cord. I would put it to the right, and it would modulate fine, but it just hanging. It wouldn't, it would key up, but it wouldn't modulate. So what I did is I went in here and I reflowed all the pins, okay, all your wires here that go to your pins, all right? I reflowed it all. Hopefully that cured it. It hasn't messed up on me yet. Okay, um, but this microphone is nothing new. Okay, so hopefully when I refloat all the pins to your wire, we won't have any more issues out of it. All right, so let's go ahead and sit you down real quick. <clears throat> and we're going to key up. Audio check one, two, three, four, five. Audio check one two three four 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 five. One two three four five. Ground control two hundred and four. Black Ops technology. All right, we got a little feedback there, so we're gonna turn the dynamite at twelve. Audio check one two three four five. Audio check one two three four five. Audio check one two three four five. Cobra one forty eight. Audio check one two three four five. Audio check one two three four five. Audio check one two three four five. Audio check one two. Audio check one two three four five. Audio break break break. All right, you had yourself a max peak setting of sixteen watts. Okay, now, if you want your talk back on, the switch, when you're looking at the radio, just pull it up, all right? When you want it off, push down, okay? There's your switcheroonie. Up is on, down is off, Okay. Audio check one two three four five. Audio check one two three four five. Audio check one two three four five. No doubt about it. Two hundred and four. Two hundred and four. Ground control. Black ops technology. Sound pretty good, man. No doubt about it. 
Custom Cobra 148 brought back to life, man. A blast from the past with the 575 M6 uh, microphone. All right. We're done and squared away. I got your mic clip here, but I'm not going to put it back on the radio. I'll let you do that uh, when you come over and pick up the radio or when I come over to you and bring it to you. Either or. Uh, but yeah, man. It's the best we can do with it. We cleaned up your knobs as well. Cleaned up uh, your channel ind indicator screen. We cleaned up your meter. There is still that scratch there. I tried to buff it out. Uh, <clears throat> we got it out just a little bit, but I didn't want to keep on buffing. And, uh, you know, uh, it's too abrasive for that plastic, man. A couple swipes back and forth, maybe eight or nine times with a very fine uh, grit uh, pad, you know. Um, but then if you did any more of than what I did to get it really clear, it'd probably start showing the scratches. So we did the best we can with it, man. And that is the outcome. Hey, guys. <laughs> Another one bites the dust. Thank you for viewing. Thank you for tuning in. I appreciate all my subscribers, all the newcomers, and, of course, the haters. Now, Ground Control Station 204, Black Ops Technology. And we're gone. Gone, gone, gone.